we're not asking for anything special and that, that specifically somehow specially treats Santa Cruz City residents. Well, nobody else is proposing moving expenses in their bid. I just think if you take the 15% off of the 28 million, you've got the 23.5 million and we're, and, that, and we're there. If that number is not the right number, then the question is, do we, do we have to add to it and how much do we have to add to it and where do we get it from? And if Capitola is willing to contribute, that's great. Um, you know, let's make the numbers, let's make the numbers work, but let's not try to, you know, let's not try to do it all on our back. I feel like we're making a big, significant I, contribution I, I, already. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that anybody's trying to do it on any, anybody's back. But, but I, I do well, think and I really appreciate that. I appreciate you saying it. But I'd like you to demonstrate it by recognizing that given that we are generating almost 70% of the revenue and only asking for 40% of it, that we are already making a significant sacrifice. So I think I think I have by saying why don't we look at what the needs are for the system? Well, we in our, in our case, look at in our the case, we're not asking for anything above and beyond renovating and updating existing and current facilities that have not been, in the case of the downtown branch, renovated since 1966. So we're not asking for anything above and beyond that, and saying we'll 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 take a 15 percent reduction. Uh, I mean, and I also think and I'm if anybody could do the same, that would be wonderful. And Susan, I mean, I think I made this point before. I mean, when you looking at it just by tax generated by jurisdiction, the number the, the number of county residents that within a couple miles of the capital branch exceeds the capital resident. I'm sure. And so, you know. I, I guarantee you that very few people know when you're on Wharf Road there, the line between SoCal and Capitola, where the problem, where the boundary is. And so, I mean, I think, I think it says "Welcome to Capitola." Well, <laughs> <laughs> only when you come in, not when you go out. <laughs> and that's the same case even with Live Oak and Branch of Point. But you know, we know these and things. We all know these yeah. things. We're not arguing these things. Well, but but you sort of argue. You're using this point by saying, "Look, how much we're generating here. Therefore, we need." And, and you know, it's like, well, let's let's be fair here. Let's figure out, you know, where the library is located. How can okay, we best serve? That's fine. Here? That's fine. And if you were to go ahead and make the adjustments based on where the population is, you're still not going to get to numbers that would support me giving up virtually 45% of our you know base or 35% of our base to the other jurisdictions so it, it, it's okay it's not it, it's just this is all this is all the overall equities of it the balancing of the issues for us all and I think Capitola winds up with what more than twice what it's generating in this proposal um, um, Santa Cruz would be 1.7 percent of what it's generating. So I mean, I think I think we're close, and we just ought to get to whatever other remaining issues that people have. And if there's, if we could lose the moving expenses and try to figure that out some other way, that might be what you know. What is the difference between you know what we have at hand and what we don't have at hand? And I know we're going to have to pay for the moving expenses. I'm not, you know, I don't recognize that. I recognize that we don't have to, you know, that we're going to have a problem with that. But we're going to have to do something about that. And, you know, after us too, I guess we'll just close it down and have no well, services out there for a while. I don't believe it required the moving expenses. Well, I think because we would close it instead. And it would be harder to close the main branch. You know, so I mean, it's a different, it's, it's, it's a loss of services on a temporary basis, you know, instead of doing a whole, I mean, I don't. You might, you might want to rotate it so that depending on how your project is going, you don't have two big ones happening at the same time, so that branches could help alleviate. Yeah, and it's I don't even know. Offset that for downtown, but certainly. Yeah, and I don't even know that. how you would, what you would move if you moved downtown. Do you have an idea? I mean, because you can't, you can't even find a place to put the books. I mean, the weight of the books are substantial, and yeah. you can't just move them into a warehouse. It's not going to work. The floors won't hold them. Scotts Valley knows that. We made you upgrade them. So, 
Yeah, but it's, I mean, and I don't, it depends on the timeline and, and I mean, it just, you know, I just think it's premature to worry about the bleeding costs when we don't even have a facility plan yet. So, I, I just want to respond to one of the points you made about capital and that was looking at twice what it puts in. And, and I want to emphasize that we're talking about twice the library that Capitola would build if we were on an island. I mean, Capitola by itself does not need a 12,000 square foot library to serve our 10,000 residents. We would build ourselves probably something in the five to 6,000 square foot range and be perfectly happy with it. So what we're talking about is a bigger facility to accommodate the regional demand because of its central location adjacent to Soquel, adjacent to Live Oak on a regional transportation route that we all use and we all know. So, you know, I mean, when you say it fast, it sounds good, but th there's nuances to all of this that I think it's we all want to Yeah, know. it really is. I mean, and, I you know, I think we appreciate them, you know, much, much more deeply than, you know, than do the taxpayers in general and, you know, right. and then do other people who are informed on these matters. So I appreciate that you, as my colleagues, understand these issues. But, you know, just getting to a place where we're all comfortable is oftentimes messy business. And so that's where we're up to now, the messy part. So, so the question is, I mean, I, you know, I, haven't, I haven't totally heard from Santa Cruz yet, or Scotts Valley, but what I was trying to push for was that Susan gives up a little bit here. If Scotts Valley can get to an even in, even out, do you think that that's something that you, your council can support? Well, I think I'd have to have the whole picture. I can't just say, well, here's just this little part they're going to want to know. Well, how, how is it all going right. to flow out? So I think we have to come up with the complete plan, and then then I can explain it to them and fully, and okay, this is what's happening here, and this is why we're giving up here, and so they can understand, understand it. Yeah. And I think Gene had something he wanted to share. Yes. Um, at the risk of being accused of kicking this down the road, I guess you kick it down the road. Uh, one of the purposes of the poll we're about to do is to just to check on everything, to see where we are. I hope we can come up with, come up with a couple little tweaks to this thing that maybe will make it a little more acceptable or an acceptable level, at least maybe more than 60, so we think we can go for 64 or 65. So we're not, or maybe even for the full 72, so that rather than trying to make decisions today or this week of exactly how much everybody has to give up, it's only a few weeks before we'll have the results of the poll and we'll have a better idea of where everybody can be. The only thing I would suggest in the, in the interim is on the assumption that nothing has changed, that everybody kind of look at everything in a detailed way to see where you can save 100,000 here, 200,000 there, 500,000 there, to get as much off, off of it as possible, assuming we still need to do that. Rather than just say, yeah, we're gonna take this, this much off. That, that, you know, but not, not expect to make a decision today on all this. Or want to even. I don't think you should want to today, frankly. Put the fear of God in us. You told us if we didn't get it done today, we were in big trouble. <laughs> um. Well, one of the suggestions Gene's making is, you know, see if we could tweak it. And so, Martine, if we did 25 million for the city, that's your 15% reduction off your 30 million round numbers and then we did 3 million for Scotts Valley that adds 2 million to the total you know then you just get to 62 million and leave Capitola in the county where it is I mean in some ways the 60 to 62 is kind of my assumption is the rate apportionment model the the issuance cost, the reserve amount, the actual interest rate, it's kind of within the noise factor, right? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, we don't have the rate and apportionment done yet, so we could, you know, have to back into some of those numbers. Yeah, I mean, my assumption is 49.10 or something as a PDU rate will pull better than 50, 51, right? Mm -hmm. 
Probably. Better than 5150, I guess. Um, Interesting amount is. <laughs> but, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's what we need to see. Can we no longer um, insure bonds? We, we have to do the uh, reserve fund. Because we used to do insurance, but I thought that went away. I'm not sure. I mean, it was cheaper. It's cheaper for some of our bond reserves. issues. We we did a you know <coughs> insured bond rather than setting money aside for a reserve fund, which would make it cheaper. We've done it both ways recently, so I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if we want to try and save some money, you know, there might be a way. What was the term? Thirty years. Thirty. Could be thirty-five. I mean, it certainly helps fund the funding model. I think it. it I mean, the world's going to loan us money in thirty-five years. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, then that's another way to skin in, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty long. Yeah, it's pretty long. Well, we can turn it around a little bit more with, with some models. I mean, again, I didn't really have a chance to, since last yesterday when first looking at the options and then at the end of the day and then this morning trying to sort of come up with uh, specific numbers. Um, I, I thought about an approach which I described, but there's variations of that, different different variations we can play with. Um, so maybe we do, I, I like some suggestion that at least I can move a little more time to See if we can come up with something. The annual yield on this is four million, yeah. roughly. Yeah, that's a forty nine dollar tax credit. Mm -hmm. What about a joint issue and joint ballot measure with the RTC roads and libraries? <laughs> county county wide half the county wide half a percent is fifty million. Right? Half like it. I mean, for the, you mean for the sales tax? So, is that right? Does anyone know the county wide sales tax? I'd have to look. I'd have to look. I think capital is like 10% of the overall sales tax, and we're about 5 million. So, I think 50, 50 million as a quarter. So, actually, at home? What? Oh, for, I'm sorry, for, for, for quarter or half? For the 1%. For the 1%. For the 1% is 5 million in capital. I think we're 10% of the county total, so I'll make it 50 million county wide. So I know the RTC is talking about, when we're talking about a half percent, I wonder if the poll's better at a, that's 100 million a year. This is four. It's always. City residents get the freeway fix. City residents get a library and a rail trail. Lots of get the freeway fix. I don't see any problems with that rail trail at the moment. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you need the train truck? <laughs> huh. Okay, so. All right. <clears throat> All right, well, um, we were trying to meet Gene's timeline, but he's given us a reprieve, so <laughs> I think we're all eager to take it. Whenever a reprieve is offered, I don't know anyone who wouldn't would want it. When is our next meeting, Marcus? Uh, October 15th. October what? 15th. Just in the first. I have uh, October 1st review poll results. Mm -hmm. No, the oh, okay. I have an October first meeting though. We have the meeting, but it was the fifteenth. I'm not sure we're going to have much to do on the first, given what we had planned to do and where we're at now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so should we cancel that meeting? I would recommend it. I can't think of anything we'd be talking about. I'm going to be flying in to SFO at eleven o'clock at night on the fourteenth from Hawaii to make it back for a nine a.m. meeting. Well, let's Hope just. Okay, so we are we are declining the um, the October first meeting. You're going to get a decline on that, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> and on the October fifteenth. No, disappointed. <laughs> and on the October fifteenth meeting, we're going to keep that one, right? 
You know, before I make you know, I'm not gonna bleed for you. <laughs> I mean, that is like you know. All right, all right. I mean, it would only be better if you said you were flying into the Maldives or something. <laughs> you know. Coincidence on the fifteenth is the same. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I think we're just about done, except for the written communication. We don't have any. The board calendar. No, I'm just we're, asking uh, if, you know, you were talking about the sixty million dollars. Do we get a chance to say anything? Oh yeah, please, definitely. Let me just see if there's anything else on the calendar anybody wants to add before we move on. I was I was ready to uh, not give you a chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. We were putting it all together. To yeah, we were putting it all together. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. Bruce. Um, go ahead. Well, uh, what I want to, you all look like you're packing up to go, so maybe you're not in the mood to listen, but can you relax the three minutes just for once? <laughs> I've got several. I, I don't want to fill it. Um, so I followed the discussion for a couple of years, and um, there's, a, you know, there's some, rather thick documents that explain what was going to be done to all 10 branches. And so I felt like I understood what was being talked about. But this year, in, in January, uh, Susan, you, you had some different numbers. And I've never, I've never really understood the detail of what the the 70 million, you know, in, in January you had a 70 million dollar number, and I've never understood the detail in there of what the change was between what what the library board was discussing and uh, and what you wrote in January. So it's difficult for me to address the new numbers because I kind of don't know what's behind it, and I wish there was more detail. Um, so for Aptos, for example, I mean, I do understand that it's it's the busiest branch per square foot, and I did I did understand that rationale. But the project request is 10 million, but the last cost estimate was 8 million. So I don't understand what the extra 2 million is for Aptos. Can that be written down somewhere? What why it needs to be more? Um, again, on Capitola, I, I went to the citizens committee meeting one time, there's a citizens library committee in, in Capitola, and my impression was that most of the people on the committee would be perfectly happy with a 7,000 square foot library. They, they want the branch, they, you know, they want it soon, uh, but they're not fixated, the citizens don't seem to be fixated on the 10,000 uh, square feet. That seems to be a few Capitola leaders that they've got fixated on a on a, on a more expensive library. Uh, so the the additional several million dollars to get from 7,000 to 10,000 square feet, that's basically, the, the day that this happens, that's gonna be a wealth transfer from the unincorporated part of the county to Capitola. And uh, I'd, I'd really rather see, you know, as an unincorporated resident, I'd really rather see that several million dollars uh, used to fix all the potholes between here and my house. Um, the the regional library concept that got introduced in the second uh, Capitola agreement, it, to me it's just rhetoric. Uh, it's just another branch. It, it, there isn't anything special about the Capitola branch that, that warrants uh, additional investment. Um, Regarding Scotts Valley, you, you know, I kind of, the, the library board came up with a $1.6 million number, and so to, to get from there to $5 million, I, I also don't understand what is, or it's $5 million, I don't know, maybe you're talking about $3 million now, but um, I didn't understand what that was about. So I asked uh, the Scotts Valley city manager last month, and he referred me to, um, you know, to the library board study, where that was five million was the outside, uh, the, the outside number for, for that branch. So, is was, is the intention to expand the library into the rest of that building? You know, you know, I I don't really know. That this is sort of like a, a pie cutting exercise, but um, but I don't understand what that what those millions in Scotts Valley are, are really for. Because the last time I looked at the building, it seems. 
that there's a performing arts center or something going into the other third of the building. So is that what this is for? Is to, or, or, you know, are we going to pay for something other than a library? Are we paying for a performing arts center? Or is it to expand into the rest of the building? Is that really what it is? You, you know, I'd just like to know a little bit better what that is. And I just want to say one more thing about Live Oak. Um, you explained a little bit yesterday about that, more detail than I had seen in anything that was written down. Could you provide more detail about what the agreement is with the school district? What, what's the idea there? Because in a way, it sounds like an 11th branch. Um, and I'm concerned about staff. Where's the staff going to come from? Where's that going to get paid for? Because in Scotts Valley, a private philanthropist uh, paid at least a million dollars for a boys and girls club up there. And my understanding is they can't open the doors because they don't have the money to set aside to operate the building. I mean, it's been, it's been bought and paid for. It's been fully equipped. But they can't get the doors open. So in Live Oak, what's the plan? You know, who's going to staff it? What, it you know, I just want to see more detail about, about all of these uh, project requests. Thanks. And Mr. Lee, did you want to say something to Yes. Hi. Mark Lee, again, from Ben Lohman. Um, I've looked at these budgets here and the allocations, and again, I kind of agree with uh, Mr. Holloway here that this is a wealth transfer from the county to the city. This, is, this whole plan is really Santa Cruz-centric. Uh, I, I, we, we as county residents don't appreciate it. We need at least $10 million just to build our existing Felton Library and upgrade our Boulder Creek Library. Um, also, I used to be the facilities director at NASA at JPL in Pasadena, and these numbers are approaching what, what it costs to redo a complete scientific-oriented building. I, I still think your figures need to be reflective of real hardcore construction numbers. I don't believe the numbers. I do not believe the numbers. I used to be a facilities director at NASA JPL. And this is the type of construction you would have for 100 buildings in a very scientific uh, you know, research park where we're launching missiles and doing satellite research. Just one building alone uh, would cost the, the, the whole budget for the county that you're proposing here over the next 30 years. Secondly, uh, if we're going to choose, so I, st I still think your budget is at least 20% over inflated. I want to see architectural drawings, construction costs, etc. Also, if I were to be more uh, equitable, I would choose option five putting, leaving money in the county for the development of our existing uh, libraries there. That you wouldn't have a 40% uh, unincorporated uh, usage of, of the central library if we had better facilities in the county. And uh, regarding the Scotts Valley, they're rich enough, they have sufficient income and a tax base. I, I, I still think, you know, uh, we, we need to be more equitable in this plan. I still think you're 20% or $9 million over overpriced on this uh, existing proposal. And there's gonna be a lot of pushback, I can tell you. Thank you very much. Additional comments? Okay, so let's see if we can um, just respond to a few questions that came up. Um, in terms of the initial project we requests, again, what that uh, document that you saw in January was an attempt to uh, memorialize the additional requests that had been made over the course of months. Um, and it pretty much is reflecting uh, just a few small things. Um, the moving costs in Santa Cruz, a couple of million dollars associated uh, with the moving costs for the main branch was one item. A piece for the Live Oak community was a second item, and then a piece for the Scotts Valley uh, community was a third item. And I think I spoke yesterday about what the concept is for Live Oak, but um, we have an existing agreement between the county and the school district and the Boys and Girls Club for the operation of the facility that's under construction now there. 
uh, for the Boys and Girls Club uh, project that's going on there. The idea here would be to build an additional annex um, for the library there. It would be operated and staffed by the library staff at the school, so it wouldn't be staffed by this library group, it would be staffed by the library staff at the school. There'd be coordination with us about putting books in there and all of that, but none of those agreements have been devised. We don't have any you know, agreement that we're building anything, so we don't have any of those agreements uh, in place. But the expectation is that we would function as a multi-purpose room, as a library annex, a place to do homework, the kinds of things that happen in larger community rooms, in libraries, but it would happen at the Shoreline Middle School. So that's the idea in Live Oak. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be another branch, it would just be an annex. Um, with regard to Scotts Valley, there was um, a couple of concepts one was the concept of uh, modifying the existing library to reorient the entrance and um, make some other improvements to uh, the uh, access uh, areas. That was one of the issues that uh, the city had identified was a concern. And then they too were interested in seeing whether or not it was possible to do something in conjunction with their Boys and Girls Club for a homework club or this kind of thing, if that was uh, feasible. But there hadn't been any, any discussion about the plans. Rather, what they were saying is that as a matter of policy, because they had put their money into the library in Scotts Valley, and Live Oak had put their money into the library in Live Oak, if Live Oak was going to get some extra money, they wanted to make sure they got their fair share too. So there was a, a concern that there be an allocation for their fair share. So the number really was a, a placeholder for them to make a determination of what was appropriate and both the amount and the um, projects I don't think have been, uh, have been agreed to or decided it, uh, in any way. And I think uh, those, that's it with the changes, right, Nicole? Was there any other changes? Okay, I think that was it. And in terms of uh, Mr. Lee's questions, he talked about getting uh, construction estimates and nailing down the documents. And I think given his expertise as a facilities manager, he'll know that very early on when you do a facilities uh, plan and you have just an initial assessment done of your facility needs, they come up with estimates and then those estimates are refined as you go through the process and they develop um, estimates for you know the project um, development and a contingency for project development and then a construction cost and a contingency for project construction and then the actual completion of the building. So we're not anywhere now those processes at this point. Um, we're just at a very uh, early stage in the process and so we're not going to have the kind of estimates that Mr. Lee is asking for for many years. And at the end of the day, the projects are competitively bid on the open Absolutely. market. And so the, you get the, you know, the best price possible given the current market conditions. So all we're trying to do at this point is to gauge, hopefully trying to guess what that competitive market bid will be. But it is subject to, to those market forces. And they did include in the last updated facilities master plan some cost escalation given the passage of time. So there, there are some factors that have been included in there to reflect the realities of the day. So um, we appreciate that that you're you're watching out for for the taxpayers on the uh, on the overall cost. But you know the final cost will just be what what they actually are. I'm also concerned about allocation between the counties and the urban areas. Yes, and those comments we've heard and that and you heard us talking about those things too. So those things are still TV, <coughs> TV. <D. coughs> I apologize for my cough. Okay, so um, anything else for today's business? If not, we'll call this meeting adjourned and we'll see you all on October 15th. That was a best case scenario for sure two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> that we decided. Yeah, you decided before we <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. well, you know,